want to let you know of a little bit of a logistical problem we were having this morning, but good morning, everyone. I'm Pastor Rachel, the pastor here at Hamburg Presbyterian Church. The logistical problem is the PowerPoint isn't working. So if you printed out your bulletin and brought it with you, you can follow along, or you can follow along on your device. So if you have an iPad or an iPod, I mean an iPhone, you can pull it up and follow along. If not, just follow along with the liturgist and myself and Sandy and you'll be fine. I have an extra bulletin if anyone would like to use it. I would. I printed my own out and then this one was printed. And I checked them were both the same, so we're good. Welcome back to those of you who were here here last week with us. Um, As Rachel told you, the bulletin will not be up here. The service is being recorded so that those who cannot be here will be able to view the service live stream for at a later time. There are two operatory plates in the back of the sanctuary, one back to the right corner and one as you go out the door. Let us prepare ourselves for worship.
call to worship, if you are able. Come, let us worship the God who came to seek and save the lost. Let us worship the God who came to seek and save each of us. Let us welcome God into our homes and our hearts. Let us give of ourselves in this worship time that we may know God. Let us joyfully and with gratitude worship God. Amen. Please remain standing if you'd like while we hear the hymn of reflection. so many ways we have run from you. We have ignored your call. We have closed our eyes to your presence. We have disbelieved your mercy. We have disregarded your words. We have belittled ourselves. We have forsaken others. So we ask once again for your forgiveness. We ask you to stay with us as we turn away from what is wrong and hurtful to what is bright and life-giving. And hear now our silent prayers of confession. Amen. of forgiveness. Hear the good news. Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone. A new life has begun. Believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. I invite Matt Brooks to come forward for the time for children and everyone can just remain in their seats for them. All right, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us this morning and welcome to uh, boys and girls joining us at home. We have a few uh, props here today with me, a few small uh, can't see them up there, they're small weights. So uh, what do we usually use these for? We use them right to either usually maintain physical strength, right, or to, to get even stronger. Uh, those of us who uh, have played or played sports, usually over the years, you have to do some type of uh, weight training for that, right? So we use just like uh, physical strength is important and we can use uh, weights for that and to keep us how healthy uh, our <clears throat> mental strength is also really important. And so what do we mean by mental strength? Well, mental strength is kind of the thing that, that keeps us going, that, the thing that sees us through when circumstances around us, the world around us gets, gets tough, when things get, get, uh, get hard, um, that mental strength is what uh, carries us through. And um, so now there is, uh, a bunch of folks in the Bible too that that were in difficult circumstances uh, over time, and that they times where they felt they didn't have any extra mental mental strength to go on, like when they wanted to feel like giving up. But God was with them uh, 
just as he's with us all now, he was with them then, and he helped them. And so there's a story in particular about somebody in the Bible uh, named Gideon. And uh, Gideon uh, uh, was going through a really hard time with Israel. This group called the Midianites were bullying Israel at that point really bad, like they would plant crops. And for seven years, every time they had the crops planted and they came up, the Midianites would come through and trample them and they didn't have food to eat. And boy, everything was just really tough and it kind of seemed kind of seemed hopeless. But then God came to this uh, man named Gideon, or this <laughs> this man named Gideon. There we go. And uh, he said, he said, Gideon, I'm going to give you my strength. I'm going to give you extra strength so you can to defeat the Midianites and um, and uh, restore Israel. So he so he did so he did that and um, Gideon uh, was reluctant at first, right? He, he agreed, you know, kind of that he was going to trust God and go on his strength. And so Gideon has an army, but the Lord says, "No, Gideon, that's that's too big of an army." And so it steps, uh, God does things and whittles it down. So Gideon's only left with three hundred men, and God says that. Uh, you can only have 300 men against 135,000. So that way people know that it was me who gave you the extra strength. It was me who delivered it, who delivered Israel and restored Israel. So um, Gideon, Gideon goes and through a little bit of trickery with people with trumpets and jars and torches in the middle of the night, they scare up the Midianites and they capture uh, their leader. So just like God gave Gideon... Uh, the extra strength and the courage to be able to handle a really challenging situation, to have mental strength. God is still with us and gives us that courage, that mental strength that we need to face the day. Um, even when things sometimes seem overwhelming and we don't feel like we have any strength, uh, God, God is there for us and um, he, uh, he lifts us up. So, Lord, uh, so let's, let's uh, pray. Lord, we thank you for this time this morning, we thank you for your example of Gideon and so many others uh, in scriptures that went through difficult times and that we thank you for giving them the mental strength to see them through and uh, the courage to face the day. We thank you for still providing that strength to us this day. In your name, Christ. Amen. All right. Next, we're going to have a hymn called I'm Going to Live So God Can Use Me. So I'm going to invite you guys to stand and if I just stand, wave to the person next to you. Let's clap. Are you excited that we're here this morning worshiping God? Hi, everybody. I'm so glad to see you all back in church. is from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Here ends the first reading. Good morning, everyone. I'm Reverend Rachel Brown, the pastor here at Hamburg Presbyterian Church. And to this morning's sermon is called Drawing Strength from God. Often when we hear the 23rd Psalm, we hear it at a funeral. We hear it when we're standing at the graveside. We hear it in that darkest hour because it is meant to be a strengthening psalm. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, 
I will fear no evil, for God is with me. And that is his promise, that our strength in our darkest hour comes from God, and from that we receive hope in him. The scripture reading this morning comes from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 21, and I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. So read along with your Bible as I read, even if they might be a little bit different. Ephesians, starting in verse 14 from chapter 3. When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious, unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power to work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Psychologists have remarked that of recent trend, many have reported feeling powerless over their own lives. People over the past few months have experienced the inability to travel where they want, work as they had come, become accustomed to, engage socially without restriction, or even go about their very lives without feeling threatened with reports of COVID-19. For many, it has resulted in feelings of exhaustion and frustration, which have manifested themselves in to greater emotional stress, worry, anxiety, and unusual outbursts of public disturbances. Governments even wonder if they can control some of the effects. Many have remarked that people are demanding that government take greater and greater control over aspects of life in order to ensure safety. If the past few months have taught us anything, it is that there is a need for a power greater than the government greater than even us to help us endure this time. And that power lies in our faith in Jesus Christ. So let me ask you, what makes a church successful? Is it lots of money? A great preacher? Great outreach programs and internal programming. Oddly enough, the early church didn't have any of that. And yet they turned the world upside down. So what did the early church have that made the difference? Flip Wilson was a, a popular black comedian several years ago, and among the routines he did were skits about a preacher at the What's Happening Now Church. One of the skits went like this. He'd shout out, if this church is going to serve God, it's got to get down on its knees and crawl. And the audience shouted back, make it crawl, make it crawl. And once this church has learned to crawl, it's got to get up on its feet and walk. And the crowd shouted back, make it walk. Make it walk. And once the church has learned to walk, it's got to begin to 
learn to run. Ooh, make it run, creature, make it run. And in order to run, it's got to reach deep down in its pockets and learn to give. Long pause. Make it crawl, creature, make it crawl. So what is that that makes a church run? Is it having money? Is it having a great preacher? Is it having great music ministry or great programs or teachers or youth groups? Francis Chan once wrote years ago, my friend from India drove me to a speaking engagement in Dallas and when he heard the music and saw the lights, he says, you Americans are so funny. You won't show up unless there's a good speaker or a band. In India, people get excited just to pray. Now there's nothing wrong with a good speaker. There's nothing wrong with a good band. But if that's the main thing a church has to offer, if that's why the church runs, they've got a problem. I once knew a church that seemingly had everything. It had lots of money, hired the best big name preachers. They had a wonderful music ministry. It even had its own evangelistic program on the radio. It was a vibrant church of 600 people. They had doctors and lawyers and state officials as members. If any church knew how to run, you'd have thought that they did. But there was something missing in that church. They did everything just right, except one thing. And because they missed that one thing, they eventually had a scandal and split, and they had to sell their beautiful building. That was my friend's church. What was that one thing? What were they missing? Paul wrote in Ephesians 3, 14 to 19, I bow my knees before the Father, that he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints that what is the breadth and height and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Is the answer forming in your mind now? Because in those few short verses, Paul laid out for us what makes a church run. Power through his spirit, faith in Christ, and knowing the love of Christ. If you have that, if we have that, you have everything. We have everything necessary for a church to run. Did you realize the early church didn't have lots of money? They didn't have big buildings. They didn't have impressive youth programs or women's programs or men's program. And yet they literally turned the world upside down. You know what they had? They had Jesus. They had what Paul prayed that they'd have that Paul prayed that we would all have. Paul prayed that the Ephesians would be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being. Each of us needs to pray to have the power of the spirit fill our inner being. Because most organizations depend on our own internal strength, and oftentimes that strength fails. But Paul is 
is talking about depending upon the Spirit of God. That's where the church gets its true strength. Through God's Spirit. And if a church forgets that, they can fall into a weary, downward circle of losing focus on loving one another, loving their community, loving God. You see, that's what happened to Israel. God said to them in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6, not by my might, nor my power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Jesus. Isn't that hard to do sometimes? We fall into the trap of doing everything by our own strength and our own power, and oftentimes we wonder why it doesn't work, and then it gets us to the point where we're praying for God's help and God's strength. And you felt that transformative feeling like all of a sudden there's a glimmer of hope and yes, I can do this. Yes, all will be well. We must pray for the power of the Spirit in our inner being. Too often we don't do that. Too often the church forgets to do that. But we come back to church on Sunday morning to remind ourselves of that refueling nature of the Holy Spirit that somehow transforms us and the weight of the worries of our cares and our troubles melts away and we're able to be rejuvenated and refilled to get through the week and the trials and the struggles of life. There's something about the community of, the, of believers whether we're worshiping together here in the house of God or through Facebook Live or on video, we know that this community is also what gives us strength and builds each other up. If we're going to be a church that puts our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, we need to rely on on God's power and spirit and not our own. The second thing Paul prayed for the church in Ephesus from Ephesians 3.17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. What does that mean? Well, think about it this way. In a lot of churches, people will ask their neighbors, have you heard of our preacher? Have you seen our building? Don't you mention it sometimes, the one on Main Street? Do you know about the various things we do in the church and in the community? Sometimes we let our friends and neighbors know there's a blessing box out front, which is a little free food pantry that gives free food to people 24 hours a day and seven days a week. Or we let people know that on the third Sunday of the month, we give sandwiches to St. Luke's Mission of Mercy. We let the, the people in our communities know that we don't just come to church and worship God and we're not an exclusive community of believers, but that we actually reach outside of ourselves and help others in the best ways that we know how and in the ways that we are able we're able to do that. We're able to have the energy and the strength in our daily lives to help others and to give those to those in need or to volunteer and help the neighbor cut grass or pick up their leaves or whatever it may be because we draw our strength from Jesus Christ. It's important that people know that we put our finger on our faith, that we identify with it, that we believe it, and that we live it. John 12, 32 says, Jesus said, I will draw all people to myself. He didn't say, I'll draw all people to Hammer Presbyterian Church, or I'll draw all people to another church or a building, but to himself first and foremost. 
Because that faith within us can transform and change the world. Back in the 1800s, there was a famous preacher. He got a skeptic to promise to come to church for four weeks to hear about Christianity. On the fourth week, the skeptic stepped forward to become a Christian, and the preacher couldn't help asking, which one of my sermons changed your mind? The skeptic complimented the sermons but said, what convinced him was a woman who came up to him after church one Sunday and said, I wonder if you know my Savior, Jesus Christ. He is everything in the world to me, and I would like you to know him too. Now that said, there was one question that bothered me as I was preparing this sermon, and that question was, why don't Christians sense this power from God's Spirit and the importance of faith in Christ? I mean, if there's power in God's Spirit and there's strength in my faith in Christ, why don't I always feel it in my life? There are times you don't always feel it in your life. But then God wants you to go back to his scripture, back to Ephesians, these verses in chapter 3, verses 14 to 19, to allow the spirit to dwell in you richly so that you might grow in your faith. You see, in Ephesians 3, 18 and 19, Paul prayed that the Ephesians might comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses all knowledge. This is the core of what changes us. It is in knowing the breadth, length, height, and depth of Christ's love that motivates us to do what we do for Jesus. Let us learn from these words in Ephesians, from Paul's actions and prayer, from that faith in the knowledge of Christ in our hearts and lives, and live that out every day. Live that out, not just on Sunday. There's a song that comes to my mind when I think about this sermon. And you can sing it in your mind as I sing it to you. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves you. Yes, Jesus loves 
as you know, we are in a period of moderated building use, so there will be no coffee hour or fellowship time after worship. So that we can adhere to the safety guidelines of the church, we ask that at the end of worship, please wait for an usher to indicate when you should leave your pew. We also ask that you please try to leave the building immediately and limit your interactions in the parking lot. Lastly, as we adapt to this new environment, we ask that you please be patient with us and try to be as flexible as possible. We are all learning along the way. Stay well. See you next week. Will you stand for the blessing? Following the blessing will be the postlude, and during that time will be the dismissal. And as she mentioned, the offering plates are in, located in the back. And gosh, what a joy to see all of you. It's so exciting. You know I just want to hug you all and high five and chat. And so, of course, the pastor's porch is open, and that is a socially distant porch at my house. You are welcome to come and sit on that porch. We can wear masks or not wear masks because it's outside. And pretty far apart, but I would love to see you all, and I encourage you, if you need prayer, to call or text or come by. You can even bring a camp chair, and we can sit in my yard, um, but that um, you are loved. God is with you. You are prayed for. Now may the peace of God and the love of the Father and the power of the Holy Spirit dwell in you richly, strengthen you enormously. And help you to carry on, both now and forevermore, in his love. Amen. Amen.